tore it down, I rebuilt it. I give myself a task. You can bet your ass I fulfill it. Yeah, man, I'm talking about Willis, one of the realest to try. My family. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Mmm. Mmm. Mm -hmm. ASMR is a registered trademark. You're not allowed to use it. ATM, registered trademark also. It is a registered trademark. It probably is. The automatic teller machine machine, ATM machine. Mm -hmm. Jaeger used to always be like, it's not an ATM machine. It's an ATM. It already has machine in there. There was another one, uh, hot water heater. Hot water heater. He had a, he had a whole list of them. James Triggers. James Triggers. Wasn't really Triggers. It'd just give them good content if somebody had a camera rolling at the time. Man, where is all that footage? Because I know people were recording. Where is all of that footage? I don't know. Lost. Lost tapes. The Lost Mixtapes. What's up? Pulling the Thread podcast episode what? 62. 55. <laughs> Man, that's really loud. It's loud, loud. loud, loud. What do we want to discuss today? What's on your mind? I'm glad this year's over. It's not over yet. I mean, it's pretty close to over. What's going to happen in the new year? What do you project? What are you going to make happen? What are you going to manifest? What are you going to create in a, a revolution in your world? Revolution. Yeah. Like the TV show. Did you ever see it? No, I did never see it. All the power went out. Oh, uh, no. And all... All automatic weapons went away. There was only like muskets and shit left and swords. Everybody fought yeah. with swords. I mean, that's, there's nothing wrong with that. There was no power, but there still was power. There was the secret internet. We killed more We killed more U.S. citizens with muskets than we have in, with any other weapon. And then the, the occupying force or what seemed to be the occupying force was some, uh, I think they were like rangers and they left base and he, he became like the leader of the evil force and they pranced around well they didn't prance around they <laughs> traveled around uh old united states on horseback and they would uh they were searching these little devices and uh it could power up there was still some power and some internet apparently and if you got caught with an american flag they would execute you in the front yard tv show called the revolution interesting i enjoyed it i didn't see it i, I didn't even know what happened do you ever see jericho the tv show i saw jericho yeah i enjoyed that Saw Jericho. That's old. Yep. Old school. Hmm. What's your predictions for 24? What's going to happen here? We're going to have a shit show election. Mm -hmm. Let's see. We're going to have a shit show election. Everybody's going to sit on their fat asses and let the let the communists take over. And we'll all be in labor camps before the end of the year. Are you going? Oh, you're, you're going to go to, to a labor camp? No, no. I'm going to rise up. I am going to rise up my own personal army, and I'm going to attack the state of Alabama. Alabama. Mm -hmm. Oh, I I kind of like Alabama. I like Alabama too, but I'm going to attack it and what, make them bend to my will. What will your will be? Why Alabama? I thought Alabama's kind of on our side. No, I'll just make them bend to my will. What will that be? We're going back to riverboats? Yep, riverboats. Plantation homes? Moss hanging everywhere? They have that right now. Yeah. They have that right now. Yeah, we should just benefit and utilize it. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. There's huge, huge <laughs> estates there for sale. For It's like a crazy, I'm like, is this the real price? Like, is this clickbait? What's going on? It's like those shipping containers. You click on the shipping container that's got the side doors and the roll-up doors and shit, and $2,000. I'm like, what's the real price? And they're like, DM me. Why don't you just fucking put what the real price is? Why does somebody that's, get a DM you? That's like driving around here and seeing a car for sale. Because mm -hmm. the price depends on who you are. Yeah, the price depends on who you are and what you're driving when you show up. If you look like you got money, it costs more. Yep. If you look like you got four first names, the cost is less. Yep. Yeah, I don't. I'm, again, I don't have a lot. <laughs> okay, did this, you see the, the Tesla? You saw the Tesla this, robot. Uh, Oh, yeah, the Tesla robot attacking and killing people? Yeah, you want to know what they're not telling you? What? There, seem, there seemingly is an attack on Tesla by the big media companies, which, I mean, of that's Of course, out yeah, there, because right? they got it. So they've come out as though this Tesla robot just maimed some workers and they had to shut the system down. What they're not telling you is it's not a humanoid-type robot. It's a robot like our buddy Jay when he worked at Nissan. Oh, yeah, like an arm. And our, that, and our yeah. arm would go crazy because they didn't lock it out and it fucking smashed a dude. We have a friend, and he had to clean cleaned up some of those messes when the robot arm smashed a dude. Um, and you know when it happened? 
When? In 21. They're telling you as though it just happened yesterday and we right, had this right, perception. Yeah. It actually happened a couple of years ago. Hmm. Well, it happens all the time. Actually. So there, did you hear that the FBI is currently indicting um, journalists, right? So you have these journalists from, uh, what's uh, Glenn Beck's show called? Or um, I think they're tied in with... Um, indicting them for January 6th? Yeah, so he was at January 6th. He was a journalist. But what is happening is he has been invited by current Congress members to come to D.C. to review the actual footage from January 6th. So they're reviewing all of this footage from January 6th. And they have all, they're building this, this video and these documentaries basically showing the other side of January 6th. So the DOJ has now said, hey, they got a hold of his attorney or whatever. And like, you have to report, we're indicting you on Tuesday. You have to self-surrender. We're not going to arrest you or anything. But what they're doing to these guys is um, they're going, hey, you have to suspend all your, they basically put him on pretrial right. release. So we can't. And they're like, what are the charges? And the the agent they're talking to is like, we don't even know what the charges are, the magistrate, until the magistrate issues the warrant. So there's not even a warrant issued. They want you to self-surrender, and then they're going to basically serve you. But what they're saying is, gag order, you're not allowed to speak on any of this, and you're not allowed to travel to Washington, D.C. So basically, anybody who's in a position to investigate this, they're making it so that they cannot investigate it. Well, again, a... uh a summons from Congress trumps the Department of Justice. So, the, so if Congress is summoning him to come to Washington, D.C. in order to present whatever he has to present, Congress trumps the Department of Justice. The Department of Justice can go suck a fat one. Um, now, Congress can't force him to present evidence. So what, what a lot of guys would do is when, when they had charges like that, when they, you know, when they were trying to be silenced like that, what a lot of guys would do is they would show up in Washington, because, again, Congress trumps the Department of Justice. They would show up in Washington, so I have fulfilled my obligation. But when it came time for presentation of any evidence, they would plead the fifth, and so what that would do is it would put those agencies in a bind. Right? You weren't supposed to come to Washington because we didn't want you to say anything. You came to Washington because Congress trumps us anyways, but you didn't say anything. So it's kind of like you please everybody by showing up and then just being like, I'm going to plead the fifth on this. Uh, but then Congress doesn't get anything to No, Congress isn't going to do with. shit. Yeah. <laughs> Congress, it, it doesn't matter. Even if old boys like gets up there and, oh shit, what's going on? What happened? Where are, are, you, we are you watching? Are you, we, are, we are said you, Congress, so you looked up gay porn? Um, so even if you gave all the evidence, Congress isn't going to do anything. So you saw the gay staffer had sex in the chambers where they actually do all the questioning where Congress yeah. typically, if you see it on TV and Congress That's is, just is grilling lead, that- somebody. So this staffer goes in and with his boyfriend and they do some butt fucking in chambers. This video gets out there, gets released. It's actually been out there. Somebody finally yeah. just brought it up because they needed some power over somebody else basically is probably what happened um so this guy's been relieved of duty he's no longer a staffer so he says that uh he is being persecuted persecuted for being gay and he is exploring his legal options for (laughs) for being terminated for making gay porn in congress chambers i'm sure that he violated a bunch of laws oh i'm sure sure just like the what'll happen is he'll just get paid off Mm -hmm. and he'll go away and live his life somewhere else but it's the it's not the it's not his fault really 100 percent, it's not his fault it's the complete democratic party's fault that they have a lack of respect for any institutional anything institutional within this country can you name the only reason why the only reason why he did that is because he believed he could get away with it right he believed that he could desecrate that area and whether you whether you think that's true whether you think someone should be able to do that or not he believed he could get away with it that was the point that he was trying to get away with something that he knew he shouldn't have been doing and that's the democratic party they're like, fucking they're they're the worst like the yeah fire, you are the worst democrats like the door with the fire alarm like the door with the fire alarm or any is there an instance like the, of a republican like having the, done something similar i mean i'm sure there is Again, it's it's only when people think they can get away with shit do they do it. And that the the problem is 
and I'm glad this guy got fired, right? That you need to set a precedence and start holding people accountable. They don't hold anybody accountable, right? There's no accountability. It's like uh, we had a discussion the other day about taxes, right? And Who did? I don't, um, uh, Spur, me and Sperling. Okay. Right, we had about taxes. And I don't pay taxes like they pay taxes, right? So, and they are angry about the amount of taxes they pay. Now, John was like, I don't mind paying taxes. And I said, you know, my thing is, I don't mind paying taxes either. I think we should have to pay taxes. But because we, the people, are the one paying the taxes, every fucking dollar should be accounted for. Mm -hmm. I don't care if you want to give $20 million to unwed mothers, but those motherfucking unwed mothers better get every penny of it. And you better be able to show that they got every penny of it. Because when we're talking about billions and billions of dollars, this is just graft. It's just... Fucking federal employees stealing fucking money from the American people to line their fucking pockets. Every dollar that gets spent in the United States should be audited down to the penny. And we shouldn't, we should not allow for any excuses. I'm telling you, we could all be millionaires if they did that, if they just audited the fucking federal government. It's I like, mean, a, a, a AOC is worth. Probably twelve million dollars right now. No, I heard it was one hundred and seventy million. Well, either way, that is theft. One hundred percent theft. Well, it's just like OSHA. It's the same thing. Bear was talking about. You know, we're doing this. We're doing these federal jobs in these federal reserves, and they have to go in. and There's this sand road, and it's it's a huge, huge project, right? It's this it's this environmental waterway project that he's just the construction company or part of the construction company on, and there's uh this little dude shows up. And he's got his pocket protector. You know, this fucking nerd shows up. <clears throat> and he's just counting. And Bear's like, can I help you? He's like under the truck. And he's making a big ordeal. One, two, three. And he's like, yeah, you're uh, you're running over these in, these fiddler crabs. And they're an endangered. They're protected, right? And that's a $10,000 fine. And there's 10 of them. He's like, bro, in case you haven't noticed, this whole road is made of sand. And in sand are animals. And there are fiddler crabs everywhere here. And this was bid. You guys requested bid. The federal government asked for this. We are out here doing the job, and they're trying to assess the fines. He's like, OSHA is always a mess. It's just graft. It's always graft. Their job is to come in and fucking steal money from individual companies yes. to pay to the federal government. He's like, you know, we have these cement trucks. I was listening to him this morning on his live, and he's, he went off on this tangent. He said, you know, these, these cement trucks come in here, and they're nine and a half feet tall. And when you get on top... You're at 10 feet. You have to get up on the truck to do whatever it is you're doing. Well, when you're above 10 feet, you have to put on this false suppression harness and you have to fucking clip in. Yes. Well, the false suppression harness is 12 feet. So you're still going to fall off the fucking truck. It doesn't suppress your fall at all. Be because you haven't got up there, they assess you a $100,000 fine. So our truck, every fucking concrete truck that comes into this project comes in these fucking things and the driver has to get out put this fucking harness on fucking clip in and then do the process he has to do and even if he falls off yeah, it's too long. it still hits the ground by yeah, two feet too, too he's long. like so finally i hired a dude and all he does is stay up on this thing so when these trucks come in because it was taking so long for these fucking trucks. We'd have them lined up a mile back because every fucking driver had to do this. He's like, I, it was cheaper to hire a dude because it was stopping all of this fucking flow. Right. It was cheaper to just hire a dude that stayed up on the fucking the scaffold thing. He's like, and that's, that's OSHA. That's yeah, fucking that, OSHA. That's, that's most of those uh, regulatory agencies. The goal is to just steal money on top of the money that they've already stolen. Yep. Um, but what are you going to do? Because they're not, again... It's like you said before, you, you have a bunch of, there are people, there are people within government that want to do good things, right? They want to do good things, but I think they it don't. it starts that way. But they a don't, bit again, what we don't do is we don't ever look at long term. We don't look at when, when fucking moms of America are like, we need to, we need to mandate this to save the fiddler crap. They don't look at the long-term effects of what they are doing. It's kind of, it, you know, it's no different than everybody's up in arms about plastic bags. We have plastic bags because you guys were worried about paper bags. Right. Right, that you were worried about paper bags. And now people are starting to go back to paper bags because, again, nobody looked at the long-term effect of it. They were just like, eh, 
don't chop down trees, but trees are, by the way, the same amount of trees are still getting chopped down in the United States. It didn't change anything. It just closed paper mills and created these plastic mills that are putting all the fucking chemicals into your water system that you're drinking every day. So again, liberals ruining everything. Yeah. All the PFAS. Because they don't, they don't think, they don't think through. It's just this emotional. That's the problem with that side of the aisle. They, they do everything through emotion. They don't ever have a logical reason on why they're doing it. And it's all manipulation, like the, the plastic bag to, to the paper bag thing, right? So they're going to charge you five cents a bag or 10 cents a bag, whatever the fuck it is, right? They could just raise the price 1% of shit, have a huge entire profit on the back end, and just put it in there. But they need that, they need that fucking diversion. They need that aggression between the two groups. They right. need you to be upset at somebody for something, yeah. always. We were at Walmart in Paris I guess, I guess it was last night. We walked into Walmart at Paris, and I don't know how many aisles. Let's say there's 50 checkout lanes in Walmart. It's a bigger Walmart there. Every one of them is a fucking self-checkout. Even though you have, like, you're walking by, you're like, oh, these, these just are normal checkouts. There's people here. There was only maybe three or four aisles in there that were actually manned registers. It has the appearance of being a manned register, but it is not a manned register. It's all fucking self-checkout. Yeah. And now all the Walmarts have, if you pay note, take take notice when you walk in a Walmart, either side you're walking in, there's a box there. There's a concrete room with a door. That is a law enforcement security room. And if you, I every time I'm in a Walmart, I see fucking cops out front and they're hauling people in there always. Now, maybe they think they can get away with it. You know, maybe, oh, nobody's watching me. I'll just steal some shit. I'm sure there is a huge uptick in that. But there is a lot of viral video out there of soccer moms like, Police showed up at my fucking house. Sheriff deputy fucking had this arrest warrant for me. I had to go to court over something they say that I didn't scan in. And, and these look like, I mean, they look, maybe it's, maybe it's a over and over kind of thing. But there's a lot of viral video where these ladies are fighting this. And they're like over a $16 thing, over a $32 thing. So Walmart gets these and sends out this demand for, um, you've been caught selling, doing this, you know, you didn't ring this up. You've been caught. We're charging you a thousand bucks and it's been busted out that Walmart actually has a law firm that just sends these things yeah, out sure. and collects all this fucking money. I'm sure. Yeah. And then when you don't get it or you ignore it or whatever, somebody comes to your house to fucking arrest you over the shit. I don't, uh, I have no sympathy. That's your fault for using self-checkout. Do you not use self-checkout? I, I never use self-checkout. I don't use self-checkout because you know what? Those people have to have jobs. I get it. Every fucking one of those people that we fire from Walmart that's working a cash register is now being paid by my fucking taxes. Those people have to have the whole point of the industry, the whole point of McDonald's and Burger King is so low entry people have jobs. By getting rid of them, all we're doing is creating another problem. This is a thing that they don't look at long term. We were just creating another problem. I will not use self checkout for that reason. And I don't care how long the line is. The but lines then again, are long. but then again, I don't, I don't go to stores. I don't go to stores that are like that. So, if, like if you go to uh, if you go to Waverly, they always have six registers, registers open. open. Mm-hmm. They Smaller do have store. a they have a self checkout, but and people use it. And but I'm I won't use it. I don't even, if I went to Paris and the line was 10 feet long, I would rather leave my cart, go home, than use self-checkout. That's a, that's a thing. It's no different than any of this other shit. That is a a thing that is going to bite us in the ass because uh, remember comfort, right? I always say comfort. They're taking a whole class of people. They're taking a whole class of individuals and they are making them uncomfortable. So... We don't need we don't need the we don't need the the poor attacking the middle class. We don't need that. That is what they're setting up. Is they're setting up the poor attacking the middle class and the middle class fighting to protect the fucking rich. I don't remember who it was. You just had a cabillionaire come out talking about that. Somebody very famous, I don't remember who it was, but he said that is his their main concern is the lesser income people attacking those people. They're all building bunkers and they've got fucking escape plans and they've got huge security details. Well, that, that's the thing that, the, you know, when you think about I don't know, like inner city Los Angeles or whatever, where you're going to have, you might have some sort of outbreak. 
They don't. They're not there. They're, they're not. Ain't no. Ain't no houses in Beverly Hills getting burnt. Ain't no. You know. Nobody's going. Nobody's going to Nordstrom or whatever the high end shops are in Beverly Hills and and raiding those. No, they're they're hitting the middle class neighborhoods because that's the easy target. So I think in California that's changing a little bit. I think they are hitting those high income places. Like when we would go to Atlanta and we'd hit those, mm-hmm. we'd we'd go to those higher end areas. Those are all getting fucking wrecked. Now I'm sure they're letting that happen. Insurance is just paying that. But they went into like Phipps Plaza and torched all those fucking Ferraris and shit sitting in there. They vandalized every fucking bit of it. Even that, but even when you think about that, that mall, that's still middle class. I mean, it's sure, you know, it's, it's sure it's upper middle class, but it's Mm -hmm. still middle class. You know, when the rich, you know, ain't nobody Tom Cruise, you don't need your motherfucking bunker. Ain't nobody coming to get you. Okay. It's just not, you don't need a fucking, an away seal team protecting you because there's just too much between that, right? It's, there's too much, there's too much middle class that's between the uber rich and like the reality is let's say fucking California just melted down and it was a fucking wasteland weekend out there. He would get on his fucking plane and fly to France. Yeah. Right. Who who cares? Right. Who who cares? So that's the, that's the thing. But I don't, you know, I, my opinion is don't use self checkout. Let that, poor old lady that is on a fixed income, get her little Walmart paycheck and make, make the, because again, it's just the Waltons trying to make themselves richer. Fuck the Waltons. They've got plenty. They've got a goddamn commando bunker in, I think it's in Virginia. Um, they don't need it. They're, they're making plenty of money. Fuck the Waltons. Well, it's not just, it's just, it's not just Walmart, right? It's, it's Lowe's. It's Home Everybody's Depot, doing it. Everybody's Costco. Doing it. Now, when I go to the self checkout at Costco, the people at, at Costco, what do they start their employees at? $30 an hour, I think, is where they start a, a Costco employee. Um, when I get to that self-checkout line, any of the people at those four registers at the self-checkout line is like, would you like me to ring this up? I'm like, fuck yeah, I would. So they take it and do yeah. the self-checkout for you. It's way faster than I'm going to yeah. fucking do it. And and then they know that you know everything got scanned. Yeah. There's yeah. the possibility of theft isn't there. We use a self-checkout app at, at Sam's Club. I like Sam's Club. We just scan it on the phone as we go and then check out. We don't even walk through a register. Right. We just go to the door and the chick looks at your, takes yeah. your, your app, zaps that, and then zaps any random three items in the cart and you're out the door. We're, we're waiting on motherfuckers that are there with paper receipts to get out the door. That works, that works very well. Costco has an app like that. We've never had the app work for us. Now, we haven't tried it in years either. So maybe it works. As you see, California is requiring, they just passed a law in California, every store selling children's toys has to have a section or aisle for uh, gender neutral, neutral, uh, not boy, not girl toys. Did you Have you heard this? I mean, uh, yeah, I heard it. But again, what toy is not gender neutral? That's what Amanda said. She goes, okay, if you're, you got Barbie dolls and you got cowboys and Indians, right? Boy, girl, whatever. It doesn't say girls can't use this, boys can't what, use yeah, this. What, what, that's that's, what that's toy the is choice in the behest of the, the parents' what, what choice. What toy is, I mean, if I had a toy store, that's I would just take the same toys and put them on the other side and be like, guess what? All these toys are general neutral. I think it's the, they're trying to make everything androgynous, right? We're not sure. It's like Pat. Yeah. Like from Saturday Night Live. Is that a boy? It's a girl. We can't really tell. Fuck I that. think they're trying to just confuse children, right? Um, at REI. I go to REI and I buy Smartwell socks. I, I've, like, I am fucking over REI. I've been over REI for years. We used to go to REI all, all the, the time. time yeah. Constantly. Every event they had. Every presentation. Fuck, we even went in there and did a fucking presentation at REI. And, uh, like, I go in there... Maybe every six months. And I go in there, and there's still little fucking boy girls wearing masks. It's the fucking, just the, the craziest shit in there. There's litter boxes in the fucking bathrooms. And there's fucking tampons in the fucking bathrooms. Why are there litter boxes? Oh, you haven't? Oh, we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. You're not aware? Oh, we've got them at the fucking school over here. At the fucking school. So, I buy smart wool socks. And they just have a looks eco-friendly packaging, right? It's like a, a wholesome, looks like a paper bag, right? So now they're all purple. Everything's fucking purple. It's gender neutral. So when you see them in the girls section, you see them in the boys section, even though they are a different cut sock, the packaging is the same. 
I'm like, fuck, fuck these guys. And it's only REI. I order Smartwool socks from Smartwool. They don't come with any of this shit. Yeah, it's a fucking REI thing. I mean. What? I Even back, the reality is even back in the day when we were going to REI, it was always granola. It was granola. Absolutely. It was always right. granola. It was, it was chicks in, with hairy armpits yeah. that stunk. It was always granola. Yeah. So for them to transition yes. into the granola wokeness, that. That was so easy. Yeah, they were all dressed up like park rangers or like a fucking a zoo yeah. tour guide or something. That would be very easy for them. So I, sure, I um, don't even. I'm not even surprised. Like I, I would have assumed they'd done it a long time ago. Anyways, so the litter box thing, right? You've got these people that that are not, they think they're cats. There's a there's a video going around, and and some of the comments where this chick is uh she's she's making fun of this. Um, She's like, I just stopped wiping my ass two years ago because toilet paper is not good for the environment and no animal in nature wipes its ass. So I just use a litter box. And ever since I've start, started using a litter box, um, you know, I'm, I'm not as sick and I just feel better. Yes. So somebody's joking about a litter box mm-hmm. and you're telling me that if you go into REI, there's a litter box? There's a litter box. There's a, these kids in school. There's kids at school walking around pretending to be cats. And, and I've, I've fleshed this out. Like, I do a live every night at 9 o'clock, jump on there tonight, and I'll be like, hey, has anybody seen this cat thing? I'm like, this has to be bullshit. This has been going on for a year where we've had these conversations. And people are like, nope, there's there's one in my kid's school. Yes, there's fucking litter boxes in the bathroom. Yes, people take a shit in them. Could you imagine not wiping your ass? They have to be wiping their ass. Can you physically do it? Wouldn't your asshole start to rot? You know they it, even even animals in the wild they only do that because they lick their fucking assholes. I I you know there was there was a time when the police would have been called. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I I can't I just can't imagine a scenario where there's a a litter box in the bathroom at schools, dude, and somebody just takes a shit in the litter. I don't care where it's at in classrooms. Uh, I don't I don't know. I don't know. Sounds, sounds you, you haven't heard this. No, I've I've heard of some I've heard of a I've heard of a young lady who has a mental illness and thinks she's a cat. Sure. But that's a mental illness. That needs to be regulated. You don't you don't you don't fix it by putting fucking litter boxes down. We know a dude that and just if used you have to... an institution like a school, you definitely don't fix it by putting litter boxes. Correct. In. We have a we know a guy that was doing the furry thing, right? Okay. Dress up in a costume. Yeah. But all that is is so that you can go out and fuck random people you don't know out in a park someplace. He's probably getting lots of, well, maybe it's a dude he's in there with. I don't know. I don't know how you'd know it's a girl or a boy, but he's having a lot of sex fucking doing the furry thing. Like, I get it. Whatever. What was that? This is me hitting that, yeah. Really? There's a lot of sex in the furry world? I I think that's why you do the furry thing. I don't think you just want to put a costume on. I thought it was anonymous, so you could be anonymous and destroy hotel rooms. I don't think so. Yeah, the, if That's, you look up if you look up the furry conventions, the last three venues have fucking shit canned them because they just get bananas. Everybody just gets bananas and fucking trashes everything. Huh. But anyways, um, yeah, but that again, that's a that is a niche thing on the side. It's not, it's not a like you don't have when you're going to Walmart. You don't have to make special concessions because there's furries in there. That's a niche thing on the side. So if you if you have a mental illness when you have to poop in a litter box, I shouldn't have to deal with your fucking mental illness. Absolutely, you shouldn't. Especially yeah. in a public we place. Used, we used to lock those people away. Yeah, and we should still. It, well, it's not that. It's, again, when you're talking about kids, so let's say 16 and below. Okay. You're talking about kids, 16 below. The whole point of being a kid is to push the edge of the envelope to see how fucking ridiculous they can make the world around them. And it's the whole point of the parent to ensure that that child is well adjusted to the real world. And if that parent is not fucking making sure that that child is adjusted to the real world, fucking CPS should take that fucking kid away from him. Well, I think that I think it is lack of parenting, lack of lack of father right mother's doing everything she can whatever maybe but lack of two parents and then putting kids around other little deviant fucking kids right if you are homeschooling your kid this i I guarantee there's no fucking kids that think they're dogs and cats and shit in a litter box at a homeschool program or at a montessori school program or at a christian foundation church foundation school program right this is public government school shit and the 
That's the only place that's happening. Any problem we had with any of our children were when we sent them to public school and they were around little fucking deviants. When you, when you take a pack of kids and you release them into the wild, they go feral and they do feral shit. One kid, your kid might not have ever fucking started a fire, but when one of those kids has a lighter, your kid's going to be standing there when he starts a fucking fire and burns a fucking building down. Yeah. That's just, that's just how that goes. It's, it's a lack of upbringing. That's what I had talked about on my, my video this morning. Um, you have to fucking parent your kids. You have to fucking have time and be involved with your fucking, somebody's going to raise your kids. And if you don't like the way they're being raised, you have to fucking do that yourself. And if your kid is shitting in a litter box, you're not raising your child. <laughs> Correct. But we are at the point now where crazy people are also having kids. So then we, we look at these kids and we're like, well, that kid's fucking nutso. Well, what does mom look like? What does dad look like? Which one of them allowed that? And, and how much fucking further, if mom is fucking nuts, just how much exponentially further is that kid going to go? Especially with access to social media right now. You're just seeing the craziest fucking shit and being targeted the most insane things. I still think that, uh, you know, when you're, when you see the most craziest shit, it's still such, it's still a very low percentage of what is really going on. I think it is, but I think it can affect, it can infect you, your children. The squeaky wheel. Well, I think it's a class clown gets the attention. Kids are smart. Kids are, I mean, kids are smart. So I'm, I I don't know I I don't whatever I, I don't care guess what I don't care if you shit in a litter box it doesn't affect me one bit at correct. all it's not correct and until the, until it's happening where your children are and then now, when the revolution happens you and I don't have children shit in a litter box anymore you and I don't have children but we're to the point where there will be grandchildren yeah but I still don't have a dog in that fight because anybody who has half a brain is not putting their kids in is not putting their kids in public school I'm with you my granddaughter did not go to public school. I'm with you. Right? Um, So I'm not worried about it. Are you willing to homeschool your child? Your grandkids? No. If need be? No. Are you willing to inflect your ideas into, or are they already there, right? Are you? No, I don't think, I don't think so. I think that, I mean, I don't, I don't know. It's, it's a, I went to public school. So Spirico, I don't know how to do math, but I did went to public school. Do you need? Do you even need to do know to do math? Right? If do is it more important to teach a kid to do math or to read a damn tape measure and understand? He doesn't even have to know that he's doing fractions. But if this is twelve inches, half of that is yeah. six, and half of that is a third, which is a quarter. Yeah, right? it has to have practical. It has to have practical meaning. But, but again, they don't you, have any of that. It has to have practical meaning, but you know, we're living in a we're living in a very comfortable world until the fucking lights go out nobody knows how to use nobody has to know how to use a tape measure have you seen idiocracy yeah do you know the shoes in idiocracy do you know what those were uh-uh, i don't remember they're crocs oh yeah yeah everybody wore crocs yeah everywhere crocs. crocs that's everybody what i was crocs. saying i said that this morning i'm like people you have people walking around in slip-on shoes in a like i was when we were in walmart last night i was there to buy some um some specific light bulbs and some power cords right some power strips and i had to i had to piss so i'm there's a girl walking down here and I'm walking here and I come and she keeps looking like I'm going to attack her or eat her. And I'm thinking, I can smell you from here. You're, you're literally in fucking dirty ass pajamas. You've got slip on shoes. You probably don't even know how to tie your shoes. And that's what I was talking about this morning. You've got people that walk around in society on a normal basis that look like they haven't bathed in days. Their hair is completely disheveled. They've got on slip on shoes. They're not, they don't even have their feet in the shoes. They have them just there, right? There's not, I bet we have, I'd be curious to know how many kids out there right now can't physically fucking tie their shoes. I bet there's a generation of kids that don't know how to tie their shoes. We used to go to daycare and at daycare, they would teach you to tie your shoes, right? You would learn that in first grade, second grade. I remember being on military base, sitting in a circle and we would just do things, not even realizing that what we were doing, right? And you were learning to tie your shoes and you were learning to zip your pants and you were learning to do these things. I'll bet that doesn't happen now. I don't know. Again, I'm so far removed from that mm-hmm. from that system that I don't know, and, and you know, I don't know. So Spearco's son works has a has a good job. The daughter has a, a great job. She now does. They do content, and he actually manages content. They have like a a, a content business, um, and they work at the home, and they were working outside of the home. So 
Jack ended up with grandson, granddaughter, and he put them into a Cellus Academy. The kid was going to school, I believe, for, for some time. Um, they put him into a Cellus Academy, which is an online school, should take about two to three hours a day. Uh, he's super interested in it. It has a emphasis on science, technology, math. It's an MIT guy that started this right. thing. It's got some, some very functional foundation stuff to it. Um, the kid whips through it, like enjoys it, whips through the program, um, finishes up in an hour to 90 minutes. And then if he does extracurricular, uh, you just have to watch this video, answer five questions. You get the school. I think the school is like $80 a month. That's all it's cost. And there's all kinds of assistance and stuff to this. The kid is like a year and a half beyond where he should be. Mm -hmm. So if he's in fifth grade, he is now in the seventh grade and is, has to still takes tests and stuff right, right. and is in the top percentages of the state for test scores. And this is just an online program. So the kid now has all this time to go do things that he likes to do and learn and be with grandpa out on the property and, and doing projects yeah, and good. stuff. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, it seems incredible. And we've we've been talking about this for years. I've got tons of listeners on my live feeds that are like, yeah, my grandkid is in a cellist, my son's in a cellist, and they rave by it. It just it seems absolutely incredible. And it takes away the programming, right? All that crazy shit that they're going to get. And they're like, well, you know, those kids are weird and they're unsocialized. They're only unsocialized if by your standards, right? They're weird because they're not wearing a tail. How do you think that tail is attached in some of these fucking kids? It's in their fucking asshole. Like, it, it's absolutely insane that they're even letting this fucking happen. Yeah, it's a mad, mad world. It is. It's going to flip, though. I think it's going to flip back. When do you see it flipping? 24. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah. So how do you see this going? Well, I, I don't. I What's don't, the catalyst? The catalyst is going to be the election. When is the actual election? November. November. So we got we about got 11 months. We got time. We got okay. Time. So what are you going to do between now and then? Train. Train? Yeah. Like we're going to do a montage? Well, I mean, we could do a training montage, but I have 11 months to do it. I'm going to train. And what does that consist that, of? I believe that the, I believe the the crisis. I believe the crisis and the, um, the meltdown of the last three months is to push me into a position where I'm better suited for twenty twenty four. And what are you doing training wise? What does that consist of? Right now, it's uh, it started as two a days in the gym. Now it's um, you know, hour in the morning, and then I do an hour road march at night. What's your hour in the morning consist of? Just whatever I want to do. I mean, I there's a circuit I do in there. I let you know. I so you're I going do, in and, and lifting weights. Yeah, uh, there's a circuit I go in there and do, and then and so I'm gonna shoot more, eat less, and just be ready for 2024. I mean, nothing. May, you know, the reality is, I've been. I've been forced to be in an uncomfortable position. And so it it really has made me think about a lot of stuff and I have to force myself to be out of an uncomfortable position. What does eating less look like? It really just means eating less. So what I found is when I started eating more meat, like a lot more meat, I don't eat, I eat very little, like I'll eat junk food for sure. Um, but if I eat a ribeye, I'm not fucking hungry. Like when I eat a ribeye at six o'clock, mm -hmm. I don't eat for the rest of the night. Um, but if I, I've been really trying not to snack, right. I don't even know why I do it. I just do it out of habit, Yeah. but I'm not really hungry and you're going to get an insulin spike when you do that. So if you just eat your meals or eat a larger, you know, eat breakfast, eat dinner, or just even one meal, if you can do that, they say that it actually gives your organs rest. So people who fast and people who uh, eat like OMAD one meal a day, eat all your calories or whatever in one time, your organs have all that. So you basically in effect are fasting because you're into that 16 hour, like 12 hour fasting is obviously good for you, but 16 is really yeah. where it starts to be a whole lot more beneficial. And then you hear about water fast. You hear these people talking about they went on a 72 hour water fast and they do that uh, once a year. And like all of their fucking, like their joint pains and shit, like they swear after just a 72 hour water fast and just going back to being shitty, the rest, like just normal human being, like when they come off of that thing, all their ailments and shit are just fucking gone. Yeah, I see it. I mean, I, I don't know. 
I, what, I'm just, I'm just, I want to be prepared if something happens in 2024. What's your road marches look like? What do you mean? Just an hour. Well, for somebody that doesn't know what a road march is, what does that consist of? What do you put on? What do you wear? Well, I, I wear my, I wear my uh, Marpat camis and I carry a 45 pound ruck and there's a loop at Sperling's place where I have to go up and down uh, four different hills. So just on the property. I'm just on the property. I'm just, and it's just straight road. So you're not going to run into any cars. Nobody's going to call the police. Nobody's like this gonna dude call with police. a rifle. I'm, I don't carry a rifle. I'm just, just ruck, just ruck. And I'm, I'm thinking about extending. I, I'm, I've actually thought about hitting the road out and going further so I can increase the distance. Um, cause right now it's, uh, I think it's, it's only, I think it's only five miles. So, to increase the distance. And then the other thing I thought too, is I was going to, if, if 2024 turns out to be the greatest year of my life, um, I, that I was going to hike the AT. Really? Yeah. All of it? Yeah. Speed hike it? No. Going to use I thought, food drops or do I, it in partial it breaks? Be, or? It would have to be food drops. But in, in my head, I was talking to Sperling about this is hike the AT attempt to, because again, uh, it's a different world, but attempt to hike the AT with just Marine Corps issued gear. Oh, totally. By us. There's some guys that have YouTube. You should do that yeah. on your channel. Attempt man. to hike the AT with just Marine Corps gear. There's, there's some guys that just, just use surplus gear, camp and surplus gear and do reviews on surplus. Yeah. You should do that, man. Your viewers would well, love I, that. Well, the, the issue is the, the issue is there are certain things within the, within the issued items that are fucking way too heavy. Sure. Right, so the the issue tent is way too fucking heavy to be carrying on the AT. Um, so I just have to figure out what I what I want to do. So I was actually thinking of of just doing uh, like '90s gear, not current issue, because oh, the, that's even heavier, man. Well, no, it's it's a little bit lighter because it you're using a uh, you're using the um, half shelter, and so. The half shelter gets split between it's the same thing they do with the tent, but the half shelter gets split between two people. So if I just have half the half shelter, that reduces the weight versus if I'm carrying a full fucking tent. Do you know how to set up a just a sill nylon tarp? Yeah. Do you know how to do that and mm -hmm. then uh -huh. pin it down and then bring it back so it's mm -hmm. yeah. But you can make a if you're if you're carrying the gear that you're if you're carrying the gear that you're supposed to have, you can actually make a full tent because you have the half shelter, but then you also have your uh, poncho. Mm -hmm. So, um, I don't know. I gotta, I gotta play with it again. I don't know. Maybe twenty twenty four is the greatest year of my life, which it, I don't, I don't see how it could beat twenty twenty two. But uh, yeah, there's no way it could beat twenty twenty two. But maybe twenty twenty four becomes this good year, and I can hike the AT, do or you know, do you maybe know? I have to hike to you know, Washington, D.C. to fight the revolution. I don't know. Do you know about the Trans-American Trail? Yes. That'd be cool, too. Uh, AT's, AT's the starter. Because the AT... I know people are going to get mad. The AT's the easy one. Uh, yeah. It's be, oh, And the only reason why I say that, guys, don't get all fucking crazy, is because the AT is is supported. But right? The trans, support. So the Trans-American Trails, uh, you can do off-road. You yeah. can do vehicles. East Coast all the way to West Coast. Part of it runs actually through Nashville. A lot of it's in Tennessee, but you're going to do it vehicle supported, right? right? So you can do it on dirt bike. You can do it on dual sport. You can do it on side by side. Can you do it on a what is it? A seventy three? What is it? Super seventy three. Can you do it on a super seventy three? You, you, you better oh, have a bro. You missed it. If, just because we brought it up, I ate shit yesterday. Like, ate shit. John was getting ready to call the fucking ambulance. I ate shit so bad on the Super 73. Oh, my God. I just ate shit. <laughs> How? It's an electric I bike, guys. I hadn't been on it in a while. And so, I, we were trying to figure out how to turn the headlight on. I couldn't figure out how to turn the headlight on. So, you instead, you put it in sport mode? No, I couldn't figure out how to turn the headlight on. And then I got the headlight on. And so, I'm like, oh, hey, you know what would be great? If I rode this fucking bike out on the grass in front of the house where it's been raining with these slick ass tires. And man, I got out there and just, and just crashed like a motherfucker. John, literally John was like, are you sure you're okay? Are you, are you sure? I fortunately didn't get injured, but there was twigs and 
sticks and fucking mud all over the damn Super 73. You should do the Trans American Trail on the mini truck. The farm truck. Do you see I the? You could. Do you see all I those? Yeah. Do you see all the links to the ferrets I keep sending you? Yes. Yes. You're not replying. I, I'm I, looking. I I'm looking for. Yeah, we should get that. Uh, because here's the th- dude. Here's that one's super cool. I've, John, like, here's the th- he here's wants seventy grand for it though. Here's the thing. You send me these things that are very cool. You send me these things that are very cool. I'm rolling fucking pennies. Okay. I'm 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 putting quarters in rolls and take them to the bank. I can't afford a fifteen thousand dollar truck that's sitting in Waverly right now. So that's the problem. That's the reason why you don't get a response. Do you want the fifteen thousand dollar one? I don't know. We would have to look at it and make sure it's not I'll bet you could crowdfund it. Fifty five? Sixty nine. Are we really only at fifty five? That's bullshit. We've been in the we've been in the fifties for months. Months. Just fifty, fifty. You're you're bullshitting. People, people are like when. So Austin will cut this up into shorts and stuff. People are like, you ever notice how these two dipshits don't know what episode it is? <laughs> I'm like, thanks for your first comment. <laughs> Give us another yeah. one. Yeah, we know what episode it is. That's the stick, guys. If you watch this, you'll know that I say that every fucking time. Do you know how God, people are dumb? Do you know how long the Appalachian Trail it, is? It long. It goes all the way from Georgia up to New York, up to Maine. Like so, if you do the full, if you do the full trail, you're going, you're sea to shining sea. So we've done some uh, live videos with Dixie, mm-hmm. Dixie Chick, Dixie um, Wanderlust. I can't remember the name of her YouTube channel, but her whole YouTube channel is like through hiking and stuff. And she's done the the trail and Nicole's done the Appalachian Trail several times too, her and her mom. So if you need any not that not coaching, but I mean, if you want to talk to somebody that's actually, I'm sure there's a ton yeah, of content. I mean, but, no, I, I, again, I, I, in my head, I was thinking everybody when when I watch any of the guy, any of the people, any of the real through hikers that are that have done all of them, the Pacific Trail, the um, there's there's another one, and then there's the AT. Th- their whole stick is as light as possible, as light as possible, as light as possible, and so they're they you know they have these tents that are made out of fucking mm-hmm. paper mache and shit, yep. and, <laughs> and they and the other thing too is. It seems like, again, perspective is everything, and all I can do is view content. It seems like they're hauling ass. They're, they're attempting to see how many miles they can get in a day, mm-hmm. and it's less, and it becomes less of an adventure. Like, I don't. Yeah, I'm not my, having fun. I want to enjoy the fucking, I want to enjoy the thing I'm doing, not turn it into a fucking 4,000-mile road march. Will you take I've a, done that. Will you take a pet with you? Like a ferret or something? You could be like the beast master. Yeah, like a ferret. Ferrets can I, you know, hunt for you. Somebody, I know somebody out there does this. If if you if you have a hawk or an eagle that you can <laughs> give me to train that I can have on my, I was going to go with owl. When I'm doing the AT, I would love that. I, there's, I saw a video just the other day of this dude, a brother cruising through town, like he's just driving through some neighborhood. A brother, like a yeah. kid with your last name? No, 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 no. But he's driving through this neighborhood with a falcon, and he <laughs> fucking turns. And he, he yeah. him, it's a awesome. Fucking rabbit runs across this yeah. front yard, and that, and he's just like, "Kill it!" And it goes out and yep. gets it, and he's out there getting it and shit. I'm like, man, you are the coolest dude in the neighborhood. Yep. Yep. The coolest dude in the neighborhood. You got a damn falcon out there hunting and shit. Would you settle for just taking pigeons? No, I don't want to be. I don't want to be out on the trail like, you know, not I don't, like, I don't be clapping for pigeons. So do you know about homing pigeons? Yeah. I you should, you should have a coop at your house. No, you should have a coop here. You right? have to have one too. No, no, you have to have a coop here, and you take your pigeons, and you put them in tubes, and then I carry them with me, and then when I get to mm-hmm. my waypoint, I'm just like, put That's a little right. mess, and then throw the pigeon in the air and hope the falcon don't get it. That's how that works. Uh-huh. Yep. Yeah. But you got to have them at your house too, in case you got to send me a message. Well, I mean, if we're gonna. If we're going to just Communicate message back, back and, and forth. forth. Yeah. I watched a lot of videos yesterday. You know what would be really cool? <laughs> what would be really cool is if me and you set up pigeon, uh, a homing pigeon system. Yep. And then secretly Brandle trained a falcon <laughs> to kill our homing pigeons to just to see how long me and you are going to argue back and forth on who's not sending messages. <laughs> It would be awesome. That would be a great video, too, of you just like, yeah, go get me that pigeon. 
My buddy Jeff Logan put a picture up with a big ass fucking some kind of bird of prey the other day. I don't. He was in. Uh, where the fuck was he at? He was doing. He was doing push ups in some abandoned building. He was in like. Prague or something. I don't know where he was. It looked like some bombed out building. He was. We have yeah. a um, second sighting bald eagle close to Sperling's house. Um, I'm gonna try and I'm gonna try and uh, I'm not gonna try and catch it. I'm gonna try and get some video of it. Try and document it. Get document it. Yeah. So I saw three bald eagles um, a couple weeks ago. Just on the way to Paris, saw no on the way to Waverly. I saw. Two bald eagles on the way there in the air, yeah. and then on the way back, I saw. So that could have been one of my them. plan is. My plan is I'm going to put a koi pond in John's front yard, and then I'm going to slowly I'm going to get koi fish, and put them on the road where that bald eagle is, and just put them out like candy, and so you know he'll get it. And he'll be like, "Ooh, piece of candy, piece," until he gets to where the koi pond is, and then I'll just keep the koi pond stocked, and we'll have a bald eagle just hanging out of the You'll neighborhood, be feeding the bald eagle. Yeah. Yeah, the wildlife guys are fucking weird. About it's not that my. Shit. Yeah, it's, it's not, not my fault that goddamn bald eagles eating all my koi fish. You got to do something about that eagle, dude. On the way to Paris a couple of weeks ago, I noticed a bunch of birds of prey on the side of the road, and I started counting them. I'd seen a few of them. I don't know how many, but I counted like seven, six, seven on the way to Lowe's, mm-hmm. and on the way back on the other side of the road were a bunch of fucking dead birds of prey. Also, I counted a total of eleven which I thought was weird. You you see, like, you'll usually see something, you know, because the owls are coming down on the road at night. It's warm, so there's snakes and shit. Um, my theory is it's all these new fucking cell, to- cell towers they're putting up or fucking them up somehow. Maybe. Or it's your local farmer that wants the fucking pigeons to come in so him and his boys can shoot them. What's that have to do with birds they, of prey? They, they don't want the birds of prey around. Oh, but they wouldn't be dead on the road out there. These are these are getting struck by oh, cars, cars or something. Oh, well. Yeah, it's it's weird. I need that um, corn crib. Do you know about the corn crib? No. There's a giant bird cage looking old style corn crib okay. s- sitting in our friend's house, and I need one of those so from, a, from a pigeon coop. Why don't we get it? Well, because it, he's not using it. Well, I don't want to ask him for it. Why not? I just want to get a different one so I don't have to take his. I wonder how hard that would be to move. It's pretty big. It is big. You know what I'm talking about, Yeah, right? I know exactly what you're talking about. How yeah. tall you think that is? I mean, I haven't seen it in a while, but in my head, it, it's got to be at least 20? 25 feet, yeah. maybe? Yeah. yeah. 25 feet? It's big. It's big. You could do Thunderdome in that. You could do Thunder. I'll bet Brandel could ride a fucking a little motorcycle around, around in there. Circles on it, or up to the top, back down. Or be a perfect pigeon cage. Be perfect. It'd be perfect. We need a pigeon wrangler. So when you're rucking, how far you ruck? Oh, right now it's just five miles. It's not far. What, it's, you, what, it's you, not far. what are you capable of? Right now, I don't know. I'm not. T- I again, this is just about getting out and and moving for an hour, right? And so I thought. Because of the the lay of the hills and shit, that it that it would whip my ass, because I haven't done it in a long time, but I could probably do it three times. When you're in the Marine Corps, how far could you move? How far? As far as necessary. And what's what's realistic? Well, realistically, you're you're. It just depends. Are you tactical or non-tactical? If you're non-tactical, a road march is supposed to be four miles an hour. So, in theory, in theory. A Marine with all his combat equipment should be able to do 25 miles in eight hours, in theory. So I'm going to sign you up for the ruckus. The ruckus? What's the ruckus? It's the refuge ruckus. It's for Caleb House. They're doing a uh, road march ruck uh, in Arkansas coming up. Coming up. I'm not sure the dates, um, but I'm going out. I have to go out there. Um, well, you better let me know what the dates are. And you're going to be Team SOE. I'm going to be Team SOE? Sponsored. Sponsored. Do I have it? Do I get a sponsored shirt that says Team SOE on it? <laughs> you get whatever you want. Let's get it. Get make a have <laughs> have him make a, a Team SOE shirt, right? And then just put like a bunch of random company logos on it as like a sponsor shirt. Just whoever okay. Walmart. <laughs> but I need you to I need you to go around and knock on doors and be like, Hey, will you sponsor me? Um, how much will you How much will you commit to per mile? Um, and I need my sponsors. I could probably do that. 
I think it'd be awesome. Have you it'd seen the great content? If you walked around like a school child and be like, Hey, I'm going to do this ruck march. I need you to sponsor me. <laughs> have a, have the fucking slip. Like they send your yeah, kids home with. Yeah, we'll just, we'll slip. just photocopy would you, one of those. Would you be down here's, for $5? Here's the prizes I win. <laughs> we'll get fucking like model airplane kit. Yeah. Would you be down for $5? Balsa yeah. would. Could I count on you? Can I count on you, Randall? I got you. Did they give, I, you know, I remember doing that as a kid. But I don't remember collecting checks. I don't Did they write the, checks? I don't know where the money went. I, feel like, I don't think they relied on us. I, I feel think like it was school a school got the money. Well, I feel like it was like a, a just like a like you would sign and be like, yeah, I promise I'll give you five bucks if you make it. Because mm-hmm. I know they used to do that for runs. Yeah. Right? How how many laps are you going to be able to do? Yep. Oh, that's crazy. The good old days. Good old days. Now you're just going to Venmo me. Venmo me that shit. I say we show up. Cash app it. I say we show up and we show up like Mad Max. And we turn this yearly ruckus thing into, it becomes like motorcycles. And what's that, uh, what's that, not the cannonball, but you're supposed to show up with a vehicle that costs less than $600? Something 500. The yeah. gumball, the, what's it, yeah, the five, it was mostly gun industry yeah. guys. I yeah. can't remember what it was, but the, there were dudes showing up in G-Wagons and fucking an MRAP and all kinds of shit. We should have done that. We should have went and done it. We still can do that. We should have went and done it. We, and you know what? And we should use that rabbit. <laughs> rabbit out there. Is it, it is a is it a rabbit? The Volks, is yeah. that a Volkswagen rabbit? The, the Gambler five hundred. Gambler yeah. five hundred. We should, we should use. That's a GTI. That's a, that's a turbo GTI. car out there. We should use that car. Mm-mm. We should use Geo Metros. So we're gonna get a pair. We could totally get a pair. Look up, see, put in Geo Metro in Marketplace right now because they're so light. You can just bounce the ass end and move them around. They come with a sunroof, so you can have a minigun. I like it. I like it. It's we a good could, idea. We could take the motor out and then put a Hayabusa when, engine in it. When is it? Dead air. I know. That's terrible. Um, I'm looking at a 92 Geo Metro for 500 bucks. Oh, man, <laughs> does it run? We're in it. It says it needs work. <laughs> We're in it. What does that mean? Body we're work? Gonna, we're in it. We're going to pull the turbo out of the the Volkswagen and put it into the Metro. Here's a 95 convertible Volkswagen Cabrio. Mm-hmm. Cabriolet. For 750 Find me a, um, what's that, uh, what's that German car? Oh, uh, the Volkswagen thing. Oh, you're not going to find one of those on there. So, Neil, Neil. will do the fabrication. Okay. Rappaport will do the motor swap, and yep. Pierre will pit. I would love Pierre to pit. Pierre will be trunk monkey. Trunk monkey. <laughs> Rear facing. Now, none of that is going to happen. Why? Because it's it's too hard to execute that type of plan. How? Where is it, anyways? Oregon? Nashville. Or the Gambler. The Gambler, they have one in Tennessee. Do they? Yeah. Did, I thought you filmed something for them at one oh, time. Oh, they really. always want me to. Hmm. Well, I guess, in Tennessee. I guess you'll get, you'll get to this year. From the sunroof of a Geo Metro. <laughs> <laughs> I found a Volkswagen thing for under ten grand in Nashville. We're going to put solar panels on there. We're going to put a cool bot in there. I love it. And we're going to overpressurize the cabin so there's no dust. That would be cool, too. And then it'll keep NBC out also. I like the idea. What's the chase truck going to be? That big-ass fucking the LMTV, the LMTV there. down there. That would be awesome we could, as shit. We could use the crane to just put the car on the back of it. That'd be awesome as shit. You show, that's my uh, Geo Metro chase truck right there. Race that, and the Geo Metro is the chase truck. <laughs> Have fucking one big-ass tire on the roof of the Geo Metro. <laughs> <laughs> be awesome. We'll take the seats out of the Razor. I got those fucking Mastercraft yeah. suspension seats in there. You're working way too hard on that. Anyways, there's a, there's a bunch of them. So really? we're doing the AT. We're doing the Gambler. We're doing the um. We're doing the. When are we doing the uh, iguana? When are we doing the iguana wrangling? We can do that at any time. I mean, I would like to go to Florida and yeah, wrestle. Go shoot 70 fu- Seventy-five foot man. Pythons. They've been they've man been, eaters. All these guys have been slaying pythons. They're bringing in world record pythons that are just fucking insane. Yeah, because the Python cowboy guy is not the dude I know. He was on Joe Rogan talking about how he got bit and was fucking bleeding out. Like yeah. a Python bit him and it cut like one of the veins or something in his arms. And he was bleeding out. Um, but the other dudes, um, some of the other big YouTube channels, 
had invited us to come down there. They work with Impact Air Guns, I think it is. Okay, yeah. yeah. They've got they've got some super cool content, man. They're and they're out there fucking laying those things out. They're the other thing I want to do is, at time. The other thing I want to do in twenty four is shotgun fishing. Shotgun fishing is that yes. a thing? Yes, it is. I know some big bow fishing guys. The, the uh, what is it? It's the Japanese. It's carp. The, it's the Japanese the carp. carp that jump out of the water. They're out here. Yeah, you can kill them. They don't care how you kill them. You can just kill them. Okay, Zach, Zach seven one, Zach seven three one. Do you know about this? We want to hook us up. Carp. Get with us. Do you know um, Nick? Did you ever did you ever go to the sewing machine place with me? Yeah, yeah. So Nick is a big bow guy. Yeah, and they're so big when they bow hunt when they oh, go yeah. out doing carp bow hunting, they send a helicopter out the I day have, before. I wonder how. Uh, I wonder what, what he did with all his fucking animals. So I assume he still has, because he was building another place on oh, the other okay. side. And he, I saw him listing a bunch of super cool military vehicles for sale over the last few months. He's just kind of liquidating a bunch of stuff. But there was some, some military scout cars and shit in there that you'd be interested in. I think I forwarded you some of the, the links on that stuff. I was thinking about all the animals he had in the warehouse. I mean, he had some beautiful mounts in that warehouse. He shot every one of those. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But still, he had some beautiful mounts. Just incredible. Just in the fucking sewing machine warehouse. I'm wondering. Well, in his o- his office was so full of animals yeah. that you couldn't even get in the office anymore. When he'd sit at his desk, he'd have to like lean forward to be able to sit down so that whatever that was wasn't hitting him in the. Yeah, he's got. He has quite the collection. He does. All right, you ready to jump off of here and hit Patreon? Patreon it up. Let's. Pay. We've only been on here for fifteen <clears throat> minutes. No, that's when it restarted. Fifteen minutes. That's it. How long have we been podcasting? Has it been an hour already? Oh, what okay. else would you like to address? I, I don't any, have anything any else. Topics I like to you'd like to touch like on? It, I feel like it's just uh, we whipped right through it. Blew by so fast. Um, any topics I'd like to touch on? Mm. Nope, I don't think so. Um. We're gonna we're gonna cruise into a new year. We're gonna have plenty of time. To, you have got plenty of time to get ready for the election. Um, do you plan to grow a bigger garden this year? Nope. Do you plan to raise any more animals this year? Nope. Nope. I'm gonna be living in the woods. Do you plan to I'm see gonna, any? I'm gonna be living <coughs> in the woods the most of the year. Think people are gonna see any combat in the United States this year? It depends on what you mean. Um, they're doing everything they can to get. They're doing everything they possibly can to pick a fight with Iran. So, so you think that'll have any backlash into the United States? Well, it just depends on. Again, you know, they need a distraction for whatever's going to happen in the election, and a war is always a good distraction. So and you don't you don't think any of these millions of combat age males coming into the United States are going to fucking nah, nothing? Sorry. You don't they're, think they're, nothing's going to pop off? They're they're in fucking downtown LA eating tacos right now. They're just they're you know, happy a bunch to be of them here. just came through in military uniforms. Yeah, well, whatever. If, hey, if you just came through in military uniforms, if you crossed the border illegally and you came through in military uniforms, and they gave you a cell phone, give me a jingle. I want that uniform. I don't care where it's from: Lithuania, Czechoslovakia, the Congo, whatever. Give me a jingle. I'll trade you. We'll I'll, we'll go somewhere and I'll buy you some fucking jeans or something. Give me that military uniform. Which which <clears throat> what's on your top of the list uniform wise? What would you like to have? I I really like the I would really it would be interesting to see a uniform from the Congo. So if you guys got a uniform, or you know the new Chinese stuff, uh, any anything I don't care. I just I just like different military uniforms. So if you're a Russian and you came across, I've already got one. So, anyways. All right. Any military uniform. So, just give me a jingle. All right, guys. All right, guys. <laughs> Episode 55, Pulling the Thread Podcast. We're going to jump over onto Patreon. If you're not aware, we have a Patreon channel. Uh, SOE Tactical Gear. You jump on there, ask questions, and then we answer, answer your questions. Jeff also has a Patreon of his own, Dog, Kennel, and Little Spoon. That's also the name of his YouTube channel. He's putting oh. content up every couple of days, if not every day. So make sure you follow over there. He does a lot of content where you guys ask questions also. So if you want to have that conversation with Jeff, make sure you follow there. Little Spoon. He's also on Instagram. Instagram, uh, YouTube Shorts, and I think there's a, a few. I think there's a TikTok over there also. There's something. I don't know. All right. Get into the digitals. We'll see you next time. Happy